Okay, it's looking like a really nice night for astrophotography. We have clear skies, and <clears throat> what we have here is um, my setup for um, taking pictures, and the start of the show is the ASI Air Plus, and uh, um, as you can see, I have my power cabling going connecting up to the ASI Air Plus uh, through the cameras and um, the mount and uh, also the focuser and the uh, filter wheel. So it makes it really nice and convenient uh, uh, to keep all the, the cabling up on the top where everything's moving and uh, keeps it out of the way and keeps it from getting tingled up in the in the mount as it's moving through the night and it used to be that i had a laptop that would sit on that the blue box down here and um, i'd have a big old long rat's nest of wires coming down into on the into the computer and uh the chances for it getting caught in the mount was uh, a lot more and uh made it frustrating sometimes when uh, it would get caught and then I'd lose a bunch of pictures. So, um, what I'm really excited to show you now is how this all communicates with uh, an iPad inside the house where it's nice, toasty and warm and um, can show family members and all my, my uh, live views of this night sky. And so we'll go from there. Okay, it's looking like a really nice night for astrophotography. We have clear skies, and <clears throat> what we have here is um, my setup for um, taking pictures. And the start of the show is the ASI Air Plus. And uh, um, as you can see, I have my power cabling going connecting up to the ASI Air Plus uh, through the cameras and um, the mount and uh, also the focuser and the uh, filter wheel. So it makes it really nice and convenient uh, uh, to keep all the, the cabling up on the top where everything's moving and uh, keeps it out of the way and keeps it from getting tingled up in the in the mount as it's moving through the night. And it used to be that I had a laptop that would sit on that the blue box down here. And um, I'd have a big old long rat's nest of wires coming down into, onto, into the computer. And uh, the chances for it getting caught in the mount was uh, a lot more. And uh, made it frustrating sometimes when uh, it would get caught and then I'd lose a bunch of pictures. So, um, what I'm really excited to show you now is how this all communicates with uh, an iPad inside the house where it's nice, toasty and warm and um, can show family members and all my, my uh, live views of this night sky. And so we'll go from there. Okay, we have the ESI Air Plus running outside on my telescope. And um, so the first thing we're going to do while we're in here is um, download the ESI Air app, which we already have. And um, so we're going to click on that. Bring up the ESI Air menu. Oh, the first thing it says is it can't find it, so we got to switch the Wi-Fi over to um, the ESI Air. So we need to point to it. We're going to our settings, Wi-Fi, and there it is, the ESI Air. So we click on that. Okay, it says it's connected. So now we can go back over to our app. 
and now it says it's connected. Uh, so here, um, we got to put in information about, well, automatically detect this stuff is you have the cabling all connected together uh, through USB. Now we're going to go ahead and enter. Okay, and so this is what it looks like. And um, the first thing that we need to do actually is polar align the telescope. So, and this actually does have a polar alignment feature. And um, so if we go uh, here and then um, PA for polar align, and then it tells you how to, what to do. So that the scope amount is shown. Connect the main camera mount and confirm the plate solve works. So I'm gonna go outside and um, put it in the correct position. And uh, um, then we'll go from there. Okay, we're back now. So we're gonna push play and get this started. Okay, it plate solved and took one second to do so, and now it's ready to do the next step. Okay, taking another picture. Now it's calculating the where the pole star is. And it looks like we're pretty close, but we got some adjustments adjusting to do so um, I'm gonna go ahead and go outside do those adjustments and um, I'll be back when I'm close okay I finished making the adjustments outside and we are now polar aligned so hit finish Okay. So now that we're polar aligned, now we can do um, shoot our target. So um, we're going to go over to Sky Safari. And okay, now that we're in Sky Safari Pro, you know, we have um, the telescope connected. Um, you can see that we're on Polaris, and now we want to go to our um, object and interest. And tonight I'm going to be shooting the Elephant Trunk Nebula in Cepheus. So we can scroll over there. And um, here we are in the center. And um, once we have our position marked that we are interested in going to, then we just hit go to now our mount is moving or a telescope okay here it comes okay so now we want to make sure that we're centered and everything. Usually it's off. So we'll go back to our ASI Air app. And we are going to take a five second exposure. Okay. All right, 
looks like we're a little bit out of focus so um, we can adjust that here with our um, and uh, so we'll move it up and down and take another exposure here Okay, I think that made it worse. So we have to go the other way two times. Okay, um, just so that you know too, I don't have a Wi-Fi extender out there, so um, it seems that um, that the Wi-Fi transmission is working really good compared to. ASI Air Pro, so that was a really good fix on uh, that ZWO made by putting the antenna on there. It can reach a lot further now. So, okay, it looks like just leave it there. I think that's that's good. Okay, so now we want to do a plate saw. So we just hit that button. It says that it took 0 0.5 seconds and it succeeded. So now we can say sync mount and we'll go back over to Sky Safari and see where it's at. All right, as you can see, it's off. So now we're gonna just say go to again and then it's gonna go back to our object. Now we're gonna come back over to ESI Air and then take another Picture. All right, the loading's actually a lot faster than it used to be, so that's that's a plus too. It used used to have a transfer rate of about uh, five to six megabits per second, but now it's up to around eleven or twelve megabits per second. So let's see, it's Let's solve that now. Okay, sync mount. And now we can, um, I can see that this center star here is, is our, um, our center point. And so we can use this tool and put up our crosshair. And you can see we're pretty, very close, but we're not quite there yet. So we're gonna go over one more time and um, I'm gonna say go to and that will make a slight adjustment now I'm gonna come back and make our fine-tune adjustment hopefully this one will be centered And there we go, looking good. So um, now we can go and start our auto guider. And I go in and make sure it's cleared first so it does a calibration. And then uh, now we're gonna take pictures with our guide camera. And I make sure that our guide camera um, looks like it's in focus. Our stars are pretty sharp. So we are going to um, hit the guide button. And it picks a star automatically and a few other stars uh, to do a multi-star guiding. Now this is something that's pretty new. Um, it used to be that it only uh, used a single star to guide it on. And uh, PhD2 um, uh, last year or, uh, came up with uh, multi-star guiding. And ZWO followed them and um, it, w 
wasn't too much longer. I think it was only about six months later, and they uh, added this feature to their software. And that's one thing that I, I really like about uh, ZWO. They're always in, innovating and upgrading their um, their software and their and the firmware for their hardware too, and uh, making it better and um, They've really come a long ways in just a short period of time. Okay, so while it's doing this, um, I'm gonna let it finish its routine and then um, we'll come back. Okay, it's guiding now. And um, as we can see in our graph here, uh, we're getting um, really good guiding and we're down at about uh, 0.55 arc seconds uh, average so um, let's go um, back to the main screen and um, let's take another snapshot to make sure that we're still centered looks good all right so now we can get ready we can put our routine together our, our sequence and so then we go to auto run and um, we can go in here and see if we have anything in memory and it's all empty so we're gonna change that and uh, now we're gonna set up our sequence or schedule and the object that we're shooting tonight is the elephant trunk or IC 1396 and I like to put in the date too along with it um, so let's see here yeah, underscore zero nine Twenty. Oops. Okay. And then we're going to add, we're going to do lights tonight. And I'm going to, I've been working on this for quite a while already. And um, I'm shooting um, four minutes worth of data in each sub. And so, or, uh, so we got 240 seconds exposure, and we're gonna do it this in H alpha. So I've been collecting O3 H alpha and um, sulfur, but um, tonight we are we have a full moon, and so. Uh, O3 does not work well on a full moon. You want it um, very, you don't want to be shooting when the moon, in O3 when the moon's up. So we're going to be shooting in H alpha tonight. Um, uh, tomorrow I might shoot in sulfur, and, uh, but we're just going to do H alpha tonight. So um, let's see, we need to calculate how many iterations we want to do so we'll put that in there done say okay and we are ready to go all right just to let you know there are um other settings that you can put into your um, like your auto focuser routine um, I got a temp sensor on there so I check I, I have it do a um, auto focus every degree and uh, um, so it 
let's check that out. Make sure that's correct. Well, it looks like it's set for every two degrees. Let's see, I'm gonna change that to one degree. Okay, and every hour, no, I don't care about time, so we'll keep that off. Um, on filter changes for each object starting after the auto meridian flip. That's probably a good idea. Um, so we'll do that there. And so we got that set up. And then, um, okay, we need. We need to change our, oh, our backlash is set up correctly. So, yeah, set up at 25. I calculated that out already, or figured that out. So we're good there. And, oh, let's see. Yeah. So we can adjust the course and find steps in there. But I think those are pretty good. So we'll leave that as is. And then um, I also want to make sure that my mount is going to do the automatic meridian flip. And which is, they've really improved this a lot too. Uh, it actually um, used to be that, uh, at least for my mount, it would do, uh, well, when it first started out, they didn't even have meridian flip, but then they added the meridian flip to it, but then it didn't do plate solving afterwards. And, um, and uh, you can do this re recalibrate guiding after EMF, and we want to, we want to do that. And, um, so then it, it figures everything out and starts, stops and starts the auto guiding and it just works flawlessly. I can go to bed and I don't even have to worry about it and I get pictures after it does its meridian flip right in the center where it left off. So it's fantastic. The I, I've never had this part work so well. Um, in fact, I've, I've, worked with a uh, sequence generator pro and I had issues there could never get that to work right uh, but I actually got that this works on this software so it's amazing okay okay we got the camera cooled down to minus 10 now and um, we are ready to run. So I'm going to start our sequence. I'm going to go straight to auto guiding or to um, autofocus. I'm just going to start plotting a V curve. Okay, we're getting pretty close to having this V curve plotted. And so I just wanted you to be able to see what this looks like. What it's going to do is it's going to um, come back and do a fine focus um, towards the the bottom of the V curve there and so it, it can get right home right into the sweet spot okay so see it went down there now it's just below 3.8 I think here it's doing 
uh, size 10 steps on the focuser where it was doing 30 uh, steps before. It has found it. And now it's going to start taking the first sub. So while it's going through here, I am going to stop filming and then I'll um, come back when it's close to being done so you can see what one sub looks like. Okay, we're getting close to this sub being done. And um, I'm just going to show you that you can remove the guiding on there. You don't have to display it, which is pretty nice. Same with the histogram. But we'll put it up there. I want to show you when it does a... It can do dithering. I might have my dithering turned off. It doesn't... Yeah, it looks like I do. But you can do dithering on here. Um, and so what you can see what um, the single sub looks like here on the elephant truck. We got quite a bit of detail in there. And you can zoom in and look around is kind of cool and look at all that detail just on this one single sub pretty cool huh on a full moon so that's what's really nice about these narrow band filters this is a CWO H alpha filter that's six nanometers and uh, stars all across the field so, that. And so with this I'm gonna call the night and we'll come back in the morning and see where we're at. Night.